In this video, you learn how to play triad chord shapes all over the fretboard of the guitar. Triads are at the foundation of all chords on the guitar, and knowing how to play them in all positions will greatly enhance your guitar playing, both in a rhythm and lead context. Hi, this is Simon Candy from Acoustic Guitar Lessons online.net and in this lesson I'm going to show you an extremely effective method for getting all the triad chord shapes down so you can easily access them in your own playing. You will learn the major and minor triad chord shapes on all string sets of the guitar but first if you're new to triads check out the lesson that's linked in the top right hand corner of this video. This will provide you with a foundation to triads on guitar and then help with what we will be covering in today's lesson. So let's get to it. Triads, they're three note chords. Um, there's lots of um, voicings of them over the whole entire fretboard. And in that video I was referring to, we looked at the C major triad or the major triad, we used C, but it was the major triad on the string sets or the string set three, two, one. So I called them three, two, one triads simply because of the strings that the notes of the triad fall on. So when we had a look at those particular triads, we had the major, root position because the root note of the triad is in the lowest voicing of the chord. It's the bass note, so it's root position. And you can see in the diagram there now on your screen, I've highlighted the root note. Then you've got what we call a first inversion major triad. Now this is first inversion because the third of the chord, E, being in the key of C here, or the chord C, we have the note C, E, G, e is the third of the chord. And when that is in the bass, when, in other words, when that's the lowest note in the chord, that's first inversion, which just means the order of the notes have changed, but it's the same notes. And then second inversion, so the fifth of the chord, C, E, G is the fifth in the chord. Um, that's now the lowest note in the base of the chord, so it's a second inversion. So each time you've got the same notes, C, E and G, but they're in a different order. And obviously moving up, you know, um, uh, up into higher registers too. And then each one of those you know, positions for the major, root, position, first inversion, second inversion, had the equivalent minor. We had the minor here, root position, minor first inversion, and minor <laughs> um, second inversion. And to get the minor, it wasn't a whole new shape, right? We don't think of the, the minor root position as some totally unrelated shape to the major root position because the difference between a major and a minor chord is one note, the third is flatted. So here's C major, the third is in the middle, so if put it down one fret, C minor. Here's the first inversion, C major, the third is in the bass now, that's got it. So each time the third you've got a flat and you'll get the minor. So now we've got all notes in the eighth fret here for a C minor first inversion triad. And then this one here the third is on top. So you've got to refret this chord a little bit to get the minor, okay? So they were the major and minor triads on the string sets, string set, three, two, one. However, we have string sets four, three, two, five, four, three, and six, five, four. So they're all overlapping, but they're all different string sets from which we can play the same triad shapes on to get more variation and more possibilities in our playing. So I'm gonna go through those triads now, and then we're gonna look at a way to train them. I'll work through this probably reasonably quickly, but of course it's a video, so just pause it <laughs> when you wanna look at a particular set of triads, right? You don't have to move through them in real time like I am here. You can stop, pause, rewind, skip, whatever. Um, what are you, uh, it's my 90s mentality there, rewind. It's um, scroll, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> showing my age there. Um, but anyway, you get the idea. We have, as I said, the string set 4, 3, 2, and the major, C major, we'll stay with C major here. Our second inversion is this shape. Now I haven't started at root position because I'm just starting with the, the C chord, the C triad that's close, you know, that, that's available first. I'm not going to jump around a little bit. Okay, it just happened that the root was the lowest in on the fretboard here for 3, 2, 1. Here it's not the case. It's the second inversion with the G in the bass. Then we have root position with the C in the bass. And we have first inversion C there. What you'll notice is that because these string sets overlap, uh, you know, the lowest two notes of the 3-2-1 triad will be the top two notes of the 4-3-2 triad. You see that? So I've got C root position here and the lowest two notes of that particular triad shape are the top
top two notes of this one, the second inversion, 4-3-2, except most times I'll probably just bar that. Um, so these are the things. You want to relate the shapes together. Everything relates on the guitar. Nothing should be in isolation. Maybe you begin learning something in isolation, but then you've got to connect it in. And there's lots of ways to sort of visualize it and connect it visually. Okay, so that's what's going to happen. So here, the top two notes of this 4-3-2 major root position triad are the lower two notes of the um, second, uh, what is that, first inversion, C. And likewise here, you've got the first inversion, <laughs> lots of words to say here, first inversion C major triad is, you know, the top two notes of that are the lower two notes of the second inversion C major triad, three, two, one. Okay, lots of numbers I'm throwing at you, but hopefully you get, you get that. Okay, now each one of these triad shapes has the equivalent minor. So here's the major and drop the third down, which is on the second string here, and you get the minor triad. 4, 3, 2. And here we've got C major, drop the third, C minor. Up here, C major, drop the third, C minor. Okay, so again, relate the minor shape to its equivalent major. Okay, and that's a way to, you know, get all these things, as I say, connected and integrated together, not all separate shapes, because they're much harder to, to remember and visualize and grab in your plane when you just see them as all separate entities, if you like. That's the 4, 3, 2. Um, string set. Now 5-4-3 is the major. This one's in an open position because it's got the open third string G there. You'll probably recognize that as the lower three notes of the C open chord. First inversion, second inversion. And if we wanted to play that open position upper, fret, upper octave, there it is there. Okay. And then the equivalent minor, you just got to flat the third. So there's a 5-4-3 root position minor triad. And then here it is here, first inversion, minor triad. And where's the other one up here? Uh, yes, of course, there we go. Okay, there's the minor second inversion triad. And if we wanted to put the root position up an octave so you can see it as a closed position shape, then we can do that. Again, you know, major, minor, major, minor, major, well, yeah, up the octave, major, minor. When you do them back to back like that, that's a good way to, to relate the two together, to marry those two uh, triad shapes, major and minor, together. And then finally, six, five, four. So what do we got here? We've got, oh, I missed the note. Second inversion, C major triad there, on the, you know, starting from the G and the third fret. Then we have root position and first inversion. C major, and then the equivalent minors, right? Minor, and then we've got our minor shape here, and we've got our minor shape here, okay? And again, you can play them back to back, and you can play, and you can play. And as I'm doing that, I'm thinking, you know what I'm thinking? <laughs> I'm thinking these are a lot of chord shapes I'm going to have to edit into the video as I play them. I'm thinking, don't play them again, you're going to have to you know, edit all these chord shapes in. It takes a little time to do, but anyway, um, they are the six, five, four major minor triads. Now, do you reckon? Do you do you recognize something there? Is something stick out to you there? Perhaps not just straight off the bat, but if you study those two string sets, five, four, three, six, five, four, what you'll notice is that they're the same shapes. Here's the, uh, for example, first inversion, five, four, three, C major triad. Well, here's the first inversion, six, five, four, same shape. Or here's the second inversion, C major triad. Here's second inversion, C major triad on the string set, six, five, four. So there's the same shape. Here's the major up the octave, root position, C major triad, and on the lower string set. Okay, those things help. So you get sort of two for one, if you like. Okay, so when you play them back to back and you play the major and the minor and you play the string sets back to back, you start to, to see the, the, the commonalities between, the, between the, the triad shapes, okay? They all start to kind of get into your, your, your mind, okay? It takes a little time, but they, they'll get there. That's all the, the, um, 
closed position triads on the guitar major and minor. So what we're going to do next is look at ways to train these so that they're easily accessible to you in your playing. Okay, so now we're going to train these shapes. And if you've seen the first video, then you probably know where I'm going with this. And if you haven't, well, that's okay. We're going to apply the same training methods basically to the triad shapes we just looked at. The chord progression um, will be C, G, A minor, Good old one, five, six, four chord progression. Now, when you do train the triad shapes, don't just train them on one chord progression day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month out, because you'll you'll only get them so far, and then it, it sort of it becomes redundant if you just keep doing the same chord progression. Use any and every chord progression you can. Look at blues progressions. Look at the chords to the songs you already know, and and do them in triad shapes for the purpose of the training and the the. The, you know, building the skill of finding all your triad shapes and visualizing them on the fretboard. You're not going to voice out a particular song with triads because that might be the way you play that song. It's going to be because um, you want to um, you know, get better at being able to use them so that when you want to use them, they're, they're there. In terms of what do you do with triads, the creativity side, there's a also a link to another video on the channel in the top right corner that will go into that. I've done a video there all about the creativity of triads, like how can we use them? Um, so check that out because that's not what this video is about. This is about getting the shapes down and that video is about using the shapes to create some cool music. We're gonna play that chord progression, C, G, A minor, F by shape. So by shape means we use one triad shape for the whole chord progression. Okay, um, so for example, let me use the string set 4, 3, 2, and let's play that chord progression and let me just pick a shape to work with. Let's say the second inversion, C, because that's the first chord in our progression, right? So we play that. Now what we need to do, the next chord in our progression is G. So we're going to use the same shape to find a G major chord. How do we do that? Well, it's all about the root note, right? Here's the root note. You can see it highlighted in the diagram on your screen there, the middle note. So if you can find a G note, on the third string, which here's one at the 12th fret. Now you can build the triad shape around that note. And there you go, G major. Now, when you go to A minor, the next chord in our progression, it's the same, it's the second inversion, but we're gonna make it minor. So you go up two more frets. There's the A root note that we need to reference um, and build the shape around on the third string. Now, if I play A major, of course, it's not the right chord. We want an A minor for our progression. So we're just gonna flat the third, and it gives us our second inversion, um, A minor in this case, triad. And then here's our F. So I've used one shape for the whole entire chord progression. C, G, A minor, and F. That's a great way to begin. That's the easiest way to begin because you just got to deal with one shape, the, you know, the major and the minor of that particular, you know, one inversion, if you like. That's an example of playing by shape. So if I was to do that, and you could do it with the other triad shapes on that string set too, but I won't go through every combination because we'll be here for a while. But if I did the same thing by shape on the string sets five, four, three, and let's say I use this, the first inversion C. So where's the root note? It's on top. And I want a G, go find a G, which would put you up here. And there's your G, first inversion. Then we want A minor. So we're going to go, we're going up quite high here. That's fine. This wherever it takes you, it takes you. Um, this is the A minor triad. Okay, with the A on the top. And then the F. Okay, so we've got C, all first inversion triads, G. And then we've got A minor and F. So as you can see, when you play by shape, it does, you know, you do trouble around the fretboard a bit, which isn't necessarily ideal. But when we do it by position, you'll see how we can stack them and get really cool sounds and, and you get much more opportunities, options. Okay, so let's say one more example, going by shape on the lower string set of six, five, four, we could do root position. Oh, not there. There's the C, root notes obviously in the bass here. So we go down to G play in the open position there, A minor, and then F would have to go up here. Okay, so that's C, G, and then it was A minor, and then we're going to jump up a bit here. So by shape is good, and there's nothing wrong with voicing something out by shape. You basically are doing it with bar chords a lot of the time, one shape and you're moving up and down. So, um, I mean, there's the root five shape too, but uh, so there's, it's not like that's wrong. 
but it's limiting. Okay, so once you can do that, you then take, um, you know, this will take the same chord progression here. We'll come back to string set four, three, two, and let's go with that second inversion triad and C in the middle. Now, instead of using the same shape and going up to G and traveling all that way, I want to instead find the G four, three, two triad that is closest to the C that I'm currently on, C triad. And it happens to be the G right there in root position, very closely related and a very smooth transition of notes there. Then the A minor, the closest A minor, is right there. And the F, notice A minor and F, all you gotta do is move one note up a fret. They've got two common notes, and that's a very smooth sound. So now, C, G, A minor, F, okay? It's all around the same area, but to do that, you've got to be able to use multiple shapes within your voicing of the progression. And if you work with one shape at a time, like we just did, that becomes easier to do. You've got to sit there and sort of scratch your head and work it out and so forth. That's, there's no sort of getting around that. You've got to put the work in, but if you do this, you're on the right pathway. You're doing the right thing to get them down actually quite, quite quickly. And then there's other possibilities on that string set, but again, let's not do that because we'll be here all day. Let's say we take the first inversion triad we played on strings five, four, three, and now we're looking for the closest G, which happens to be second inversion G. Then we're looking for the closest A minor, that's the second inversion, A minor, and then the root position, F. So we hear that same chord progression, right? That C, G, A minor, F. And of course, we're using these triads here. So there's your C, your G, your A minor, and your F. Okay, and let's do an example of it on the lower string set here. So let's say, um, what did we use? We used root position here, so let's go with that. So C root position, what's the closest G to that? It's the first inversion. What about the A minor? It's going to be the first inversion A minor as well. And then the F will be second inversion. So that is C and then G and then A minor and F. Okay, so by shape, then by position. And I only did one possibility on each string set there. So multiply that by three. And then you can mix them up any which way you want. You don't have to just do by shape or by position. You can do whatever you want. But if you train them like that, they're all going to be available to you. You're going to see them. You're going to be able to visualize them and grab them as you need them. One other thing you could do is work vertically. So I'll give you a quick example. Um, let's say I start on this C major triad. Now I want to find the G, but not as a 654. I want to find the closest G as a 543 triad, and that would probably be this one, second inversion. Then the A minor, I want to find the closest one as a 432, which would be this. And then the F as a 321. So I've worked my way up the string sets via that progression. C, G, A minor, F. Now, would you use that sort of voicing for a chord progression? You could. It's probably not likely, but that's not the point. It's so that you can see these triads any which way, and they'll just bang. They'll jump into your fingers without you even thinking about it in real time. So you could go through and work vertically off each of the, the triads and play that progression, and then do the whole thing again with a different progression, and another progression, and then another progression, right? You can't help but just get to know these like the back of your hand. If you train them, even just five, 10 minutes a day. We're not saying get this down in a week, but you could get it down pretty quickly. If you follow these methods, you do it consistently, you do it you know, five, 10 minutes a day. It doesn't have to dominate your practicing. So that is how we can get all the triad shapes down on the prep board. If you like this lesson, then you'll love this free ebook audio I've created for you about using fragments of chords to solo with on your acoustic guitar. Of course, chords are thought of in the context of rhythm guitar playing. However, have you ever considered them for soloing? In this ebook, you learn five unique ways to use chord fragments to solo with on your guitar. Chord fragments allow you to create a great dynamic with the contrast of single notes to chords in the lines you play. All examples in the ebook have been broken down into the finest of detail, so you can not only play them, but understand what is going on. So you can use chord fragments in your own guitar solos. So click the link below the description of this video and download your free ebook audio 
how to improve your acoustic guitar solos by using these five cool and easy tricks. Let me know in the comments section what acoustic guitar topics you would like to see covered in future videos. I read every comment and I would love to hear your suggestions. If you like this video, then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And of course, hit the all important notification bell button so YouTube can tell you when I've released a new video. This is Simon Candy from AcousticGuitarLessonsOnline.net. As always, thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate your time and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.